So it's part two of lesson two. We're starting to work with Node. Um, now, Sue Quinder had a good question just on the break, which was if we're using console.log to print a message, server running on port 3000, how come if we look in the console here, when I refresh, why doesn't that message show up here? Which isn't a bad, uh, well, I guess part of it is I took my server offline. Um, oh, note is also one other interesting thing. Before I put my server back online, I got this message. It says that N your version of NPM is out of date. So run um, a run that command to update. Now it has npm i. That's just a short form for install. So if we want to install packages, we can just use npm i instead of npm install. So I'll say yes, terminate my server, and I may as well npm i minus g node mine. So I'll run my new version. May as well follow that command and let it run again. And then we'll start our server again and we'll talk a bit more about our console and why our message doesn't show up. Always a good idea if it prompts us up. Actually, there's an interesting story about this that we should talk about which I'll come back to in a minute. Okay, so it's updated. So I'll use nodemon server to start it again. It prints my message here. My server's back, but my console, it doesn't load there. So why when we use console.log, why does this show up in our command prompt, but not show up in the browser console? You got it. The browser takes client-side JavaScript only, but this message is server-side JavaScript, so it shows on our server console, not in our browser console. Um, so, Rob, you, you bring up an important point about using NPM, and there's something we do have to be careful of. There's a great story. This is from, when did this happen? A um, couple of years ago. So here's what happened. A programmer, so everything that's on NPM is open source. The source code has to go on GitHub. You put your package, you know, Daniel makes a code library in this class that he thinks is neat, he wants to share. You can just publish that to NPM and anybody who wants to use Daniel's package can go ahead and install it as a dependency and use that code library. So what happened a couple years ago was this developer had a had created a, um, a npm package with 17 lines of code in it. It was basically used. I think it explains it in here. Um, it was a I'm trying to think what that package actually did. It does describe it in here. So he called his package Kik, K-I-K, and he published it. And what the package did, ah, it was about justifying code. So it was 17 lines, so when it compiled, if you wanted to write justify your code, this package would do it. So it was one of the most popular packages on NPM, and thousands and thousands of, web, of Node apps used and depended on this package. The problem was, he called it Kick, and there's a company in California who's registered, that's the name of the company, and they've, uh, they own the name. So the company said to this developer, you need to rename your NPM package. And he said, I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. All these people, there's thousands of applications using it. If I rename the package, all of those applications are going to break. So I don't want to do that. Um, so they, they basically got into an argument 
and the developer told the company 30,000 bucks for the name. Um, so the company said, no, we're not paying you anything. We've already paid for the name kick and you're not allowed to use it. It's our legal trademark. So what he did was he said, fine. And not only did he delete that package, he had 273 other packages on NPM. And he said, I'm taking them all offline. I put all this stuff out as a, you know, in good, in, uh, you know, in good faith. So other developers can use my packages. I don't want to get sued for this. This like, this isn't right. Um, so I, I don't remember what the resolution of this so this guy basically said, this is the risk when you publish stuff on NPM. Oh, here was the update. He did, yes, he basically said, I'm sorry, but I'm not doing it. So tons and tons of web applications went down when he pulled his packages off of NPM. So that is the risk inherent in this to be mindful of. NPM's great because we can go get a library, plug it in and use it and it's free. But that's the risk. This kind of stuff doesn't happen often, but occasionally it does. Okay. So I'm just going to go back and show, let's see, this section of video. So we basically want to try both a blocking and a non-blocking version of this actual sample he describes. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of text files, two different JavaScript files, one that reads the contents of e and print, reads and prints the contents of each file, one in a non-blocking way and then one in a blocking way. So we'll actually try the blocking version first because that's kind of what we're used to. This is how we would write it in ASP.NET PHP. So let's create a couple text files here. So we'll right click our project, click new. Uh, we'll just click new file. Let's call this one food.txt. Let's just make a simple list here. Let's list maybe somewhere between 10 and 15 items. What's something you've eaten today? Ernest, what's in the container? Sorry? Okay, so we got rice, we got beef. What else have you guys eaten today? Ariel? What did you have for breakfast today? Okay, we already got that. You tell what you have for breakfast. Okay. Cassidy, what's something you've eaten today? That counts. It's food. Jesse, something you've eaten today? Me too. Anka, what have you eaten today? Raj, Alex, something we can add to the list? <laughs> Alex? Alex, have you eaten anything today? Have you eaten anything today? What's one thing you've eaten? Uh, Mike? Oh. Nothing? Tamara? Eaten anything today? Juan, have you eaten anything today? Uh -huh. All right. That's a good enough list. So we're going to make lists of two different sizes. So if we have about a dozen 13 items in here, that's probably a good list. Let's make a new text file. We'll call it drinks.txt. And we'll put some items in there, but uh, maybe a few less. To make the file. Okay. Ryan's drinking chocolate milk. I'm drinking water. Anything else someone's had today to drink? And maybe one more item. 
All right. So we want to now write a node file that reads, <coughs> excuse me, reads and prints out the contents of each file. And the files are different sizes. So let's make a new file. This one's going to be a JavaScript file. And this one, we'll call this blocking. This is our kind of traditional version. We're going to do one thing, finish it, do the next thing, finish, do the next thing, finish. So we're writing blocking or synchronous code. We'll call it blocking.js. So we use the HTTP library before. We're not actually, we don't actually need HTTP for this, but we need a different node module that gets installed with node for reading files. There's a, a library called FS for file system. We want to use that library in order to be able to read the text files. So reference, nodes, file system module. So we'll use let, and we will require or connect to that gets installed on our machines when we install Node. So first, So we're going to display four things when we run this. First, we're going to display a heading that says drinks. Then we're going to display a list of the drinks. Then we're going to display a heading that says food. Then we want to display a list of the food. We're going to call a method called read file sync. Read the file synchronously so our code, we want actually our code to block in this case. Um, and I'm just going to double check my node documents for a minute. Make sure I got the syntax right. No. Um, <coughs> Okay, so I think we can just call the TXT. Bear with me for one second. Sorry, let's do this first. So first, we'll log out a heading that says drinks. We'll print a line to our console that says drinks. We're actually going to assign the contents of this to a variable. So we'll create a variable called drinks. And then we just want to display this variable. And we're going to do the same thing with the food. We'll print a heading, read the file, print the contents.
actually, I'm going to do this in the reverse. I'm going to do the food first. I'm going to do the same things, but I actually do the longer list first. One really important thing to note with node and R variables. How are they different from the C sharp variables we worked with in ASP.NET? If we were writing this code in C sharp, what would be different about our food and our drinks variables from the way we've declared them here? Raj? Um, um, you have to give data type first, and you're doing, and then uh, like you need to give data type first. first. Right. So C sharp is strongly typed. So when we create a variable, we have to give it a data type. Is it an integer? Is it a string? Is it a date? Is it a Boolean? Remember our node code, it's just plain JavaScript. And in JavaScript, variables have are not typed. JavaScript is untyped. Alex? So, yes, but when we use var, it's not that the variable has no type, it's that the type is understood. Um, whereas when we're using let, it's not that the type is understood, it's that the variable has no type. It's just a variable. So let's save this file. And if we run it from our command line, things should happen in order. The title food should print, the list of food should print below it, then the list of drinks displays, sorry, the title drinks, and then the list of drinks at the bottom. So our server, I want to stop because right now it's running our server.js file. We want to run the blocking file instead. So I'm going to hit control C to stop the server. Now with NodeMon, when you uh, hit with when we use the node process, when you hit Control C, the server stops right away. With NodeMon, it actually gives you a prompt: Are you sure you want to stop it? So you've got to type yes and enter. Now the server's offline. If I go back to my browser, right, this page is hanging now, and now the server's offline. Now, we don't really need to use nodemon in this case. We're only going to run the file one time. So I'm just going to use the node command because we're not loading a page and doing updates and refreshes. So we'll run the command node. If you use nodemon, that's fine. And we will run our blocking file. OK. Well, it sort of worked, but not completely. It did print the headings, but notice it printed, it didn't interpret our files very well. It's kind of given us a binary rendering of the content in the files. So we're going to want to fix that. So when we call read file sync, I think we also have to specify the file encoding type. I think that will fix our problem. So I'll save the, those changes, and we'll try this again. Up arrow, and now our code runs. So it prints food, prints our list, prints the drinks heading, and now. So even though the command on line 14, we want our code to block in this case, 
this command printing the word drinks, it's going to run much faster than printing this command. But our code waits. It blocks. We won't print this title in food items get displayed first. So if we have a scenario like this, where we want to make sure one thing finishes before the next process begin, we'll want to use right, we'll want to write blocking code. We're now going to try this with non-blocking code by writing two callback functions to read the file. So in terms of the amount of time to run this process, the time looks like this, right? We print the first, we're basically printing the first heading, reading the file and printing the contents, and then we're printing the second heading, reading the contents. So this file, it runs in the order we want, but performance-wise, it's slow because it only can do one thing at a time. So let's create a non-blocking version. So create one more JavaScript file and call it non-blocking. We're going to do similar things. The changes we're going to make, we're not going to use this read file sync method. We don't want it to be synchronous. And we're going to need to use this callback structure with an anonymous function. So we can say start this code and then do other things and come back when it's done. The result will kind of look messy, but it'll help us see what's happening. So again, we're going to need the file system module from Node. We'll print out the first heading. And now we're going to get the food, open the food file and print it out, but we're going to use an asynchronous function for this. We're going to call read file. Again, we pass in the name of the file. We pass in our encoding. And now we have our anonymous function, our callback function. Open the file. And when it's done, Display the list of food. Sorry. In here, we've got two parameters. We'll have an error. If we get no error, we're going to read the contents of this file into a food variable. While this is happening, our code is going to continue on. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to call read file asynchronously on the drinks. We'll set the encoding and then we'll write our callback function to print the list of drinks when we're done reading the file.
inside of this method, inside our callback. So whenever we're selecting data in Node, our callback always has two parameters and they're always in this order. The first parameter and, and both of these, only one of these values will get filled. So the first callback parameter is an error. So if reading the data generates an error, we'll have information about that error, why it failed here. And if we have an error, then our this variable is going to be empty. This, the data we're trying to select is empty because we got an error. If our selecting the data is successful, this variable gets populated with the data and our error will be empty. So even when we're querying the, our MongoDB for data, for data, we'll use our callback, we'll have those same two parameters. The error is always the first parameter. So one of them will have a value, the other one will always be empty. So let's save the file. We'll actually generate an error in a minute and we can see what happens. We can try. So now I'm going to use Node to run my non-blocking. Just before I do, what do you expect we're going to see? Everything's going to get printed. What order do you think? Or we've got four different things we're displaying. The food title, the list of food, the drinks title, the list of drinks. What order do you think these things are going to appear in and why? Well, first of all, do you think it will be the same display as with the blocking version or will it be different? Okay, it will be different, yes. Why will it be different? Ernest? Okay, so you think it'll print both titles first. Why do you think it'll print both titles first? Yeah, it takes some time to open and read the contents of the file. As this is happening, our code is going to carry on and print this. It's even going to try. So probably the titles will get printed first. Now there's 13 lines in our food file. There's only five lines in the drink file. So even though we start the, the, reading the food file first, do you think the list of food or the list of drinks is going to be displayed first? Cassidy, what do you think? Think the list of drinks because there's only five? Well, let's let's see. All right. So you guys, Ernest and Cassidy, you're exactly right. It prints both our titles first because it can do these things while it's reading and displaying the list of food. And in fact, reading and displaying the list of food, that actually happens last, right? The drinks are ahead of the food because the food file is two and a half times bigger. It takes longer to read all that data out and process it. So you can see now, obviously in this case, the blocking version would be better from a functional point of view because the data doesn't really make a lot of sense the way we've displayed it. But you can see where this is going to benefit us for performance because we can do four things at one time and we don't have to wait for anything to finish before we can go do something else. The key of what makes our node applications really fast. Just in terms of the error handling, if I break the name of the file, let's say I call it food one. This is where we would use this error. We could do a little error handling here and say, if we have an error, we could print a message. Uh, and then we could just say return. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, whoops, sorry. We could try doing error handling this way. Error print an error message, otherwise print the list of food that we get back. Let's see what happens when we do this. So our food file, our file doesn't exist with that name. It should cause an error when we run it. So there's our simple error handler, right? We didn't get any data back. We got an error. So we've been able to handle and display that message. So in the drinks case, our error was empty, and we got drinks back. In our food case, we got an error instead of some data. So this keeps our page from crashing. how it was. There's our list. Anybody have any questions about our code so far? Mayor? So if you and you get different results, well, that's interesting. Okay, I better try that. So I just ran it with, yep. Oh yeah, you're right. Look at that. So it still prints the titles first. Um, my guess is there is caching going on of reading the file. That the first time it reads the file, it has to read it, and the second time somehow there's a cache mechanism involved. Really? Oh. Okay, I got food first and then the drinks. I'll keep running it. Yeah, consistently I'm getting drinks on the bottom of mine. Run it a few more times. I'm curious if it if it changes. Question? Okay, do you have an error? What does it say? Okay. We have to so you're still running. We're not we're not running the HTTP server. That was the server.js file. So hit control C to stop the server, and then we're trying this file by running node non-blocking. We want it to load a different file. Either one, doesn't matter. You can use node or node mon in this case. When we're using the HTTP server, we definitely want node mon, so it will restart automatically. With this one, with the just the plain JavaScript file, doesn't really matter. Okay, you guys do have a small lab to do. Okay, um, since our cl our class is early Tuesday morning, I th the labs we have, I'll make them do Thursday night. So you have two and a half days. None of them are that large, so that's plenty of time. Especially because you have basically the rest of Tuesday if none of, nobody has any other classes today. So for your lab. Here's what I want you to do. It's quite simple. Um, just a little bit of JavaScript review for you. So this link here on Code Academy, they have a little online, you do this in your browser, they, have, they walk you through creating the game Rock, Paper, Scissors as a JavaScript game. So it prompts the user to type in rock, paper, or scissors, and then it uses a random function 
to choose the computer's weapon, rock, paper, scissors. And then you need to use some logic to compare what did the user choose, what was generated to the computer, and who wins the game, or is it a tie? So you do the whole thing online, like you actually type the code right in here, and they give you hints on the left, and you do it one bit at a time and kind of put it together, okay? Probably takes maybe 15, somewhere between 15 minutes to half an hour to do. And then when you're done, all you need to do is just so you have the code editor here, and you get to, re to submit and check your code as you go. So when you're done, just create a single file, just copy all the code here, paste it into a JS file, and put it, put it on a GitHub repository, and send the, the link to me. Okay. So when you're done creating it, just copy it, Yeah, create a file called lab1.js, create a repository comp2106 dash lab1, and upload your one JS file there. And what I'll do is I'll grab your code, I'll put it in my console, and I'll play your game. <laughs> and I'll make sure I enter rock a few times, enter paper a few times, enter scissors a few times. So basically what it displays is it should display the computer's choice as well as who wins the game, right? The user enters their choice, the program will display computer picks rock, and then it will say, or computer picks Scissors, it's a tie. Okay, so there's basically a couple things output. So this should, shouldn't take you very long, um, but just even though it's client-side JavaScript, good practice for getting back into JavaScript for the stuff we do in this class. Okay, so you have a couple days to do it. Um, next week in class, We'll do some more with Node. We'll look at some other NPM packages, install some other NPM packages to express for another week. Um, we'll do some more practice. Actually, we'll see. We may even do. We may even start with Express next week because it'll build a bunch of stuff for us. Okay. Any questions about the lab? Okay, I'll come have a look. All right, I'll put my stuff that we did today up on GitHub.